At our Eucharistic celebration today, we request that you pray for the repose of William Prakash Rao and Josephine, A.P. Maria Das, William Nazareth, A. Joe Michael, Julie Barnabas, Irene David, death anniversary today, for all the departed souls, Remember them in your prayers. Also, some have asked for the prayers of the community for the successful completion of 40 years of Infant Jesus High School for the good results of Standard 10. Also for the intentions of Sandra and Isabel. Do remember them in your prayers. And uh, Deepak and Sheba and family, Alfonso, Pragasam and family, Vincent and family, Augustine and uh, Pius and family, and uh, there are two landmark marriages which, the, uh, which they would like you all to join and thank God with them. Now, Shiji and Anita, who celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary today, would like you to join. Thank God for these 25 years of their life together. But also, I'd just like to inform you that on the 5th of April, I celebrated my Golden Jubilee of Ordination. And on the 8th of May in 1972, the first marriage that I blessed, they too are celebrating their golden jubilee of marriage. And they would like us to join them and to thank God. The names of the golden jubilarians are Elvin and Hyacinth uh, Isaacs. And since uh, they suffer with indifferent health, they will be watching or following the Mass online, and do remember them in your prayers, and pray especially for Elvin's uh, well-being. So my dear brothers and sisters, with these intentions which we have in mind, we begin our Eucharist together, as together we sign ourselves saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. Who are the pastors, the shepherds, who, who people will trust and listen to? They are those who do preach not themselves, but the Lord Jesus and his good news. They listen to such shepherds. They confide in them. For in them, they recognize something of Jesus the Good Shepherd and model of all shepherds. Let us join our Good Shepherd in his thanksgiving to the Father. Let us also thank him to give, ask him to give us good vocations, shepherds who will lead people closer to Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Let us now ask the Lord to help us prepare for the celebration of these sacred mysteries. As together we say, I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, in my, thought, in my, in my words, words, in what, what I have done, done in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie.
us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. He who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the first reading is taken from Acts 13. Jesus' good news was first to be brought to the Jews, but it cannot be restricted to one group. It is destined for all. The conflict of Paul and Barnabas with the Jews becomes the occasion to preach directly to the Gentiles. The first reading, Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. In those days, Paul and Barnabas went on from Perga and came to Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went in the synagogue and sat down. And after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began to contradict the, what was spoken by Paul, reviling him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of the God be spoken first to you, since you thrust it aside, and judge yourself unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord, as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading of men of the city, stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And when the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. We will sing the response. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Can you repeat? We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He has made us his we are, his people the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is good, his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep. second reading, people from every race, people, and culture will follow the Lamb as their shepherd and be guided by him to eternal life. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number 
from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. And one of the elders said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamp in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand for the gospel. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. According to John, glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, A journalist who happened to be an atheist visited a leprosarium and there he saw the sisters attending very lovingly to the lepers. He was particularly impressed by one sister who was cleaning the wounds of a leper which much stench there was, and she was so cheerful in the way she was doing a ministry. He went to her and said, Sister, I wouldn't do this job even if you gave me a million dollars. She smiled and replied, Neither would I, my friend, and continued, with the ministry, with the patient. The journalist was so dumbfounded, there and then he rejected his atheism. He argued this way, to quote his own words, a God who can inspire a human being to such dedicated and selfless service in such revolting circumstances and with such good cheer cannot but be true. I believe in God. My dear friends, when we have a good shepherd right before us showing the way, our hearts are comforted. We trust in God. We believe in God. We do not believe in a hireling, 
but a good shepherd who leads us. That good shepherd couldn't be a priest, a pastor, a layman, laywoman, or even a child. The radical difference between a good shepherd and a hireling is that one works because he or she wants to, the other because they have to. A good shepherd is one who inspires and motivates, but a hireling only manages to scatter. How does the shepherd inspire and motivate? Jesus says, I know my sheep and they know me. They listen to my voice. This is a picture of a relationship in which there is time provided, trust reposed, care given, personal knowledge of each sheep is obtained. I know them by name. I know when they come in and they go out of the sheepfold. If anyone is missing, I would know. And therefore, it is not a long distance relationship between God and us. This is a shepherd who loves us. He inspires those he leads. He motivates them to listen to him. But the question is, the call to listen to Jesus, is that in itself enough? Is it enough just to listen to Jesus? For when Jesus says, my sheep listen to my voice, he's speaking first of all of those hearing him. We can hear someone as a passive event. We can hear and then forget. But Jesus says no. The next response, when they hear, they follow me. This is the real test. Listening, being touched by it, and following Jesus. And here's the trouble. Following is not always easy. Because we are in the midst of many, many conflicting voices today. You hear a politician's speech, you may be moved by him. He may be speaking the truth. Some do, but many don't. They only deceive. You meet with the media. You listen to it on a television, on a computer. What do you manage to gather? Well, often, the media can be terribly confusing. The very people who promote a product don't use it themselves. We hear many things on the media. In the midst of this, we also must struggle to listen to the voice of God, to the voice of Jesus. Jesus wants us to be careful he wants us to watch out for false prophets. He calls them wolves in lamb's clothing. Discern the voice of Jesus. Discern his voice in the Bible, in the liturgies, in the people we meet daily. There are a number of good people we meet daily. People with whom we want to be. People who not just impress us, but who motivate us, who tell us something about God. We see something of God in them, and it touches us. It can be a man, a woman. It can even be a child sometimes. When we listen, we get familiar. There are many people who will tell you, Father, I, I've read the Bible through and through. I'm very familiar with the scripture quotations. I can tell you where the scripture quotation is from. Familiarity with the scriptures is not the same thing as intimacy 
with Jesus Christ. Familiarity is one thing, but familiarity must lead to an intimacy. Intimacy with Jesus. And when there is profound intimacy with the Lord, a miracle happens. And what is that miracle? Jesus says, those who follow me, I will give, I give them eternal life. Not I will give, I give them now eternal life and they will never be lost. No one will snatch them away from me. No one will steal them away from me. When we follow, we obtain peace. We experience his rod, his staff guiding us. That is an imagery from the Old Testament, Good Shepherd. Or in the terms of the second reading of today, which we heard, the elder assures us, this is the, this is the way he assures us, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Again, from the book of Revelation written in the Johannine school. And uh, the book of Revelation was written for the persecuted Christian community, seven communities of Asia Minor. It promises these people that God is with them, shepherding them in spite of the persecution they must endure. And the language is extremely intimate. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Or take the reading, the first reading of today from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas give a very uplifting message. Of course, they first go to the Jews, but then when they are rejected, they come to the Gentiles. And what happens is that the Gentiles flock in large numbers. Jesus is revealed to them as the light of the, of the Gentiles. And those who follow him, we are told, are filled with joy of the Holy Spirit. And there is an image of hope. At that particular moment, the Gentiles may not have realized that they have obtained life. It's an ongoing process. In John, eternal life begins here and now. It was in the Johannine community, a community that was very, very cohesive, a community that knew what life really was. It began now. What does, what does eternal life mean here and now for you and me? Solid ground to stand on during life's storms. Peace even amid great change. Forgiveness each time we ask. Healing of life's wounds. The emphasis is on the good that is already realized. But yet, because of our human limitedness because of my human nature this eternal life unfolds for me only gradually and it becomes available to me completely only when I see God face to face so in the present we are confronted with eternal life and we are confronted with the normal life which we lead, the natural life. Which do we choose? Which do we choose? Thomas Merton, the great mystic, just before his death, was asked a very important question. And he said, what would you think characterizes the present age? In one word. And he said, the one word that characterizes the present age is busyness. We are busy. Everyone is busy. We live in a world of mass information. So many different voices that want us to listen to them and to respond to them. We live in an online age. 
in which we are bombarded with invitations to explore websites, by demands to respond to emails, requests to enter chat rooms, and by enticing adverts flashing up. In such information-rich age, we could still be losing out on something. While we are in touch with so many, there is still at the same time a poverty of attention. While we have so many acquaintances, we have very few friends. There is familiarity, but no intimacy. The sheer mass of information distracts us from focusing on anything for very long or very well, and quickly uses up our reserves of attention completely. Uh, we go completely berserk we get distracted with life. In the end, the question is, my dear friends, do we treat God, do we treat Jesus also in the same way? That he becomes only my acquaintance, but not a friend? Is the voice of the Good Shepherd completely submerged by other voices? Does Christ's word have a chance of sinking into my mind, into my heart? Do I recognize his voice? Am I motivated to follow him? It is not enough to be familiar with Christ's teachings. It is not enough just to read the Bible. No we must enter into an intimacy with Jesus, follow him, and following him is getting into the art of attentiveness. The church has always promulgated, recommended the art of prayerful meditation right through the centuries. What does this mean? We must make a conscious effort to focus our thoughts, our imaginations, and our emotions on Christ, his person, his life, his teaching, so that reasons and desires to follow him are awoken in our own minds and hearts. So much so that if someone came to you and asked you, why are you a Christian? No, that's not the correct question. Why, uh, why do you continue to be a Christian? You have the answer. You don't say, oh, I was baptized a Christian. That is the answer to the question, why are you a Christian? But why do you continue in the present moment to be a Christian? For that, the answer must stem from deep within. And that answer will come only if you are intimate with the person of Jesus Christ. Well, dear sisters and brothers, today, the fourth Sunday of Easter, is a Good Shepherd Sunday. It is also called a Vocation Sunday. It is meant to nurture vocations in our midst. We cannot always be content with an online priest as we were used to in the past two years. The online priest is not available to you in flesh and blood. A shepherd must be available in flesh and blood. An online priest does not solve the dearth of vocations in our midst. Vocations stem from happy families in societies that manifest strong marriage bonds in such societies, vocations seem to be fostered. They seem to be growing. But in those societies where divorces are on the increase, vocations too take a beating. As we celebrate the Eucharist, my dear brothers and sisters, let us know the power of the Eucharist that we celebrate helps us both in word and deed to enter into the life of Jesus. It is the power of the sacrament that helps us not just get familiar with Jesus' teaching, 
but even more to get intimate with him is life what he can do for me and for you there are so many distractions that compete with Jesus for my attention and may the power of the Holy Spirit then by this celebration claim us for God amen stand and at this point of our Eucharistic celebration let us together reaffirm our confidence and trust in our Good Shepherd I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit Born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The, the resurrection, resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to Jesus, the Lamb of God and our Shepherd, that he may lead all to the springs of life. Our response will be, our Lamb and Shepherd unite us all. Our Lamb and Shepherd unite us all. Lord, you lead the Holy Father and the Bishop to inspire and motivate their flock. May the good news they proclaim bring many to light of Christ. And so we pray a response. Our Lord, Lord and, and shepherd, shepherd, unite us all. Lord, those who recognize you are few. Let none of them be lost, but lead them gently to recognize the truth. And so we pray a response. Our our Lamb and Shepherd, unite us all. Lord, many faithful are still going through persecutions. May they keep serving you day and night and be united with you in their trials. And so we pray. Our Lamb and Shepherd, unite us all. Lord, too many suffer from hunger and many th thirst for justice and truth. Let the earth yield its fruit and let your people work for justice. And so we pray. Our Lord and Shepherd, unite us all. Lord, see the riches of heart of many who are willing to serve you and your people in ministries of love and service. Give us more vocations to priesthood and the religious life. And so we pray. Our Lord and Shepherd, unite us all. Offer your personal petition. Lord Jesus, call us by our names and unify us as one people, for you are the shepherd and Lord forever. Amen. Amen. At this point of our Eucharistic celebration, we bless God for his care, concern, protection, but above all, we bless God for his, his generosity in providing for what we daily need. All together. Bless are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, we
that our gifts be acceptable to the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, Lord, grant that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that renewal, so that renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift up the Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Overcome then with joy, in union with the whole of creation, together we sing the unending hymn of your glory, as together we acclaim. of holiness. We ask then that you make holy these gifts we prepared. Send down your spirit upon them so that they become for us the body, the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now at the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, then giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, after he finished a supper, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks to the Father, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. the memorial of his death and his resurrection. Lord, we offer you the bread of life. We offer you the chalice of salvation and we thank you for you counting us worthy to stand here in your presence to offer you worship. So we pray then, we pray that we who partake of the body and the blood of Christ, that we be brought together by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We raise our voices, Lord, and we pray we pray for your church spread throughout the world. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop Peter, for all the clergy, and for all those who have asked our prayers, remembering this day especially with gratitude, Siju and Anita, Elvin and um, Hyacinth Isaacs, whom 
whom you have brought together in marriage and sustain them in their relationship. But we also pray, Lord, for those who have died and gone to their rest with the hope of rising again through them. You have abundantly blessed us. We pray, Lord, bring them into the light of your presence. For ourselves, too, we pray that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we pray that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and that we praise, we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. express our confidence in the Father who has called us together. So united with Jesus, led by his Spirit, we with one voice say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread. and forgive, forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from evil and grant peace in our day with the help of your mercy. May we be free from sin, safe from distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Do not look on our sin. Look upon the faith of this, your people. Grant us peace. Grant us unity in accordance with your will. You who live, who reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brethren, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And you now, you, bless one another with the word of peace. Peace, peace be with peace. you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of Lamb God, Lord, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sin. Happy are we called to share this meal in communion. Sisters, kindly come forward to distribute communion. What do you want?
Let us pray. Look, Lord, look upon your faith, O kind shepherd. Be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep that you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Marriage bands. There is a proposal of marriage between Kenneth George, son of late George Anthony Varghese and Usha George of Holy Redeemer Church, uh, Henur Bandi, and Teresa daughter of Sagai Nadar and Rosalind of Holy Ghost Church and Hutchins Road. This is the third ban. If there is any impediment to this marriage, kindly inform the parish clergy. The announcements for the week. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Uh, also, today is the vocation Sunday. Let us pray for vocations. If any girls or boys are interested to become priests or sisters, make contact the priest for guidance. Also pray for priests, pray for your priests and sisters to be strong in their vocations. Today we also celebrate the Mother's Day. We thank God for the gift of mothers and we pray in a special way for them and thank God for the selfless service they offer in the families. The liturgical feasts that are celebrated during this week are on 13th is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, and on the 14th is the feast of St. Matthias the Apostle. Dear friends, the fathers in the parish clergy have started the Easter House Blessings. Your SEC leaders will inform you about the date through WhatsApp groups, or you can please contact the SEC leaders in your area regarding the details about your house visits. It was decided and announced to you that the Feast of Our Mother of Perpetual Help, which was postponed due to COVID-19, will be celebrated on the 26th of June, 2022. The flag hoisting, so therefore, will be on the 16th of June with trilingual mass. The Novena days will be from the 17th to 25th of June. Those who would like to sponsor for the expenses like 
for the shrine or for altar decoration for the nine days or for the float or for Mother Mary's flag, you may visit the parish office to give your names for sponsorship. Friends, this is the Marian month. Praying rosary in the house is a blessing. The zonal leaders or the ACC groups will, will be coming to different houses with the statue of Mother Mary to pray the rosary in their houses. Please welcome them when they come to your houses. We are in need of teachers for English Catechism. If anyone is interested, may I give your names to one of the parish clergy. St. Paul's sisters have put up a bookstall outside the church. You may visit the stall for Bibles or other prayer books and you may avail their service. Dear friends, we are in need of altar service, new altar service, the boys and girls who are studying up to ninth standard those who are interested may kindly give the names for being altar servers and they could be trained for assisting at the altar. St. Joseph's Church, Lingarajpuram will celebrate the annual feast on next Sunday, that is 15th of May. The flag hoisting will be on 12th of May. You are all invited for the feast. Vacation Bible School in Tamil has begun from today. It has started at 8.30 a.m. from today and it will be for three days from 8th to 10th of this month. It is conducted in the parish hall. Those children who would like to register for VBS 2022 may go to the parish hall and do the registration. Perpetual Help Sisters have started preschool at Chellikare. The details about that are on the notice board. Online admission application forms are available for PUC at Germain's Academy. Last Sunday's collection is rupees one lakh seventy one thousand and five hundred rupees, and God bless you all. Let's stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May God, who by His resurrection of His only Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption give you gladness by his blessings. Amen. Amen. May he by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go now in peace and go in the power of the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And in heaven with Christ our bride.